So we have our stitch panorama. However, we have something on the right hand side of the image that we wouldn't really want to keep in here, which is, um, as odd as it seems, a no parking sign at the edge of a cliff. We're going to remove this with something called the clone stamp tool, which is one of the older healing retouching tools, but it is brilliant for concealing content when we're dealing with organic material in an image. I'll zoom into the region where the parking sign is, making sure that I've got the greenery and some of the sky visible here in my image window. And then in my layers panel, which I'll just move to the side, I'm going to add a fresh new layer. So I'll click on the icon for add a new layer, and then we'll rename that and we'll call that clone work. And then I'll head across to the tools panel on the left hand side and activate the stamp tools. Now, if you press S for stamp, you'll activate one of the two stamp tools. Just make sure that it's the clone stamp and not the pattern stamp that you have active. In terms of the brush tip up here, I will come back to this last because it needs a little bit more explaining. Um, but from here, I want to make sure the mode is set to normal, opacity set to 100, flow 100. Make sure that the align checkbox is turned on and then make sure under sampling, this is very similar to the healing retouching tools we looked at earlier, but that needs to be current and below. Because of course our clone work layer is completely empty, so we need to sample from the current layer and the background layer, which is underneath it. And then I'll come back to this brush tip menu. So first of all, let me just show you by going to general brushes in here. And if I start off with a hard round brush, and then make sure the brush size is bigger so we can see it nice and clearly. Uh, so yeah, about 150 pixels, hit return. You have to sample. So this is literally, the clone stamp tool is a copy and paste brush. You copy from some part of the image and then you drag with the clone stamp tool to paste it somewhere else. So if I take a look here at, um, let's have a look at this region here where the, where the, uh, where the bracken is. If I sample from around about here. So I'm going to hover my cursor in this region. I'm going to hold down the alt key on the keyboard and then alt and left click with the mouse, let go of the mouse, let go of the alt key and then move my cursor upwards. I've now sampled that region of the bracken. Now, if I just left click with the mouse and let go, that's what all your brush marks inside of Photoshop look like. If I click and hold down the mouse and drag, we get a stroke but really that's not good enough because the edges are very hard. We want to try and blend it in with its surroundings. And I know that I'm putting bracken into the sky, but it's the most contrasting thing I can show you for the edges of our brush tip. So let me show you a difference between that and if I choose a soft round brush. Again, leave it the same size, press return. I go down here, hold down the Alt key, Alt left click, somewhere in the bracken, come up to the top, now you can see a difference. If I just left click, it's much softer. So it will blend in much, much easier. And then again, from here, click and hold down the mouse and drag, we get a brush mark in there like so, which is softer. So it's worthwhile picking a soft edge brush if you can, at the very least. So if I go back a few steps just to remove those, because obviously we don't want any bracken in the sky, a couple of other things to bear in mind. If you're going to remove this sign, so this is the region that we want to remove that here all the way down to the bottom because the content aware didn't look too great down there either. So we're going to remove all that sign. Ideally, what we're going to do is we're going to sample from regions that are say around here or here or from the foreground around here. You'll have to bear in mind whereabouts you're going to start copying from and then paste in with a brush. And the reason is this. So if I sample from say, let's go for this region here. I'm going to sample from there. In other words, copy, hold down my alt key, alt left and click. Let go of the mouse, let go of the alt key. Now, if I start from around about here and then click and drag, sure, I can drag across my sign in there, get rid of it. I've not let go of the left mouse button, but if I keep dragging, I'm going to start creating another version of the sign. So you need to make sure that when you do sample, bear in mind which direction you're going to drag with the brush and make sure you don't run into anything that you don't want to pick up again and repaste. So you've got to be very carefully about where you start and finish with the clone stamp tool. Um, it will only identify that it's been removed once you let go of the left mouse button. But whilst ever you've got the left mouse button held down, you're dragging with the clone stamp tool, 
it will still see that sign as being there and it will still copy it and it will still paste it somewhere else. So if I just hit illustrate this by sampling in the sky, alt left click and then bring my cursor down to the bracken and then click and drag. Now you can see in the sky, the target, that is where it's sampling from. In other words, copying and then it's pasting that content into my brush tip. So you have to be very careful about looking where your cursor is and also taking a look at where you're sampling as well, just to make sure you get the results you want. Now let's just go back up to the edit menu and choose undo clone stamp tool. So now we kind of understand how the clone stamp tool works. We can attempt to remove the sign from this image and we'll look at that in the next video.